Want to make a really simple and easy cedar bath mat? We'll show you how after this. I'm Kyle with Adventures at Home, and in this video, we're going to make this wonderful cedar bath mat. We saw this for the first time in the magazine, The Family Handyman, and we knew we had to make it for ourselves. Here at Adventures at Home, we love all things DIY, and we post new DIY tutorial videos every week. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now let's get into the video. So we're going to be working with a cedar 1x6 in this project and we're, the finished length of the horizontal slats that we're going to be using is 24 inches but because I want a nice clean finished edge on the ends of the boards I'm going to cut this to 24 and a half inches and once we get them ripped down to their final width we can go back and we can clean up the ends to make them nice neat and square. Now that we have those cut to length, we can go ahead and rip them down to their final width. We're going to be making the slats at one and a quarter inch wide. Now if you don't want to rip down one by sixes to their finished width, you can also buy one by twos at generally any big box store. We're just going to avoid this because when you do buy one by twos, you generally get a lot of checking and warping when they dry those. So we're going to try to avoid some of that by cutting down our own boards to width. We're going to need seven of these total and we're going to go ahead and cut all of those down to width now. Once that's done, because we want a clean end on all of the boards, we're going to shave off the end of one side of all seven of these boards, and then we can go back and cut them to their final length afterwards. Now using a stop block, we can cut them all down to their final length of 24 inches. Using a stop block is really great for this because it enables us to cut all of these down to the exact same length. Now that we have all those cut, we can go to work on our bottom support boards are going to hold all of these together. The finished length is going to be slightly longer than this and we're going to trim these up afterwards but for right now we're going to cut this down to 15 and a half inches long. And we can do the same thing we're going to make these the same width as the other boards and we're going to rip all of these to one and a quarter inch wide again. We're going to need three of these boards and we can cut these now. Now we're just going to shave off the end on one side of all three of these. We're going to go back later and cut all of these down to their final length at the end of this project. After that's been done, we're going to take two sides of the top, or two edges of the top boards, and we're going to just round them over. We're going to leave the bottom edges square. This gives us a little bit better surface area for them to adhere to the bottom supports. Now, if you don't have a router or a router table like this, you can do this with a palm sander and some elbow grease. Once that's all taken care of, we can go about sanding all of these down. 
Now, generally when you buy cedar from a big box store, only three faces are gonna be finished and one side's gonna be left pretty rough. So we started with 80 grit sandpaper and we got everything relatively smooth and then we worked our way all the way up to 320 grit sandpaper. This does take a little bit of time, but having a nice smooth surface for your feet to stand on is well worth the effort. After everything's sanded, we can go ahead and start assembling this. We are going to be driving the nails from the bottom of the bath mat through the bottom supports into the top boards. This serves two purposes. One, it's going to hide the nail holes so they're not visible on the top. And two, not having the nails on the bottom is going to add a little bit to the water resistance and prevent the nails from rusting. This is really easily done. You can just line it up with the end and side of the boards and use a speed square to hold everything square and just tag it in place with a brad nailer. Now we can do the same for the other side. Once those two are done, we have three little blocks here that are three quarters of an inch wide that we're gonna be using as spacers to make sure everything is perfectly spaced. And it's gonna be as simple as putting the blocks in place, adding a dab of glue to either end of our top boards. Use the spacer blocks to get them lined up perfectly in position and tacking them in place with the nail gun. And we can just go and work our way down until we have all of them installed in place. While I'm working on this, I just wanted to remind you guys about our website and our other social media sites. You can find all of our projects categorized on adventuresathomellc.com. We'd also like to connect with you on Instagram and Facebook. We post there daily and it's a great way to connect with us. And it's also a great way for you to share some of your project ideas with us. And if we choose to use one of your smaller projects and build it in our videos, we're going to try and do our best to send you that project for free. We can't wait to connect with you. Now as we work our way to the last board, you can see that the support boards are definitely too long. But this is intentional and we're going to clean those up in just a second, so don't worry about it. Now we can install the middle support. It's going to be as simple as adding a dab of glue to where it's going to line up on the top boards. Then we're just going to center this where it needs to go and use the speed square to hold it perfectly square and then work our way down the board tacking this to all of the top boards. Starting to look good. Now we can trim off the ends of the bottom supports of the flush cut saw. Doing this serves two purposes. One, in case you don't install the top boards perfectly square or you don't cut the bottom supports to the perfect length, this way you won't be left with a gap at the end and using a saw you can cut them all perfectly flush. And touching it up with a sander after, afterwards makes everything perfectly nice and flush. Now we can go back and fill in all of the brad nail holes with some wood filler. This, this serves two purposes as well. One, it covers the nail holes and is a little more aesthetically pleasing. And two, it'll cover the nails and make them slightly more water resistant. That way we can prevent a little bit of rust and prevent it from leaching out under the exterior of the seal. After we've filled them all and gave them a couple minutes to dry, we can just hit everything with a sander again to remove any excess wood filler. And we're just sticking with a 320 again just to remove the excess wood filler. Now everything can be wiped down with a tack cloth to remove any dust before finishing. Once again, if you don't have a tack cloth handy, you can use a moist paper towel and just wipe everything down. Just make sure that it's completely dry before finishing. 
Now we're going to finish this with spar urethane. Spar urethane works great for this because it's one of the most water resistant finishes out there. And it's going to give us a nice satin clear look and really bring out the grain of the wood. But it's not going to affect the natural beauty of the cedar at all. You can apply this in a couple of coats. You're going to want to let it dry about four hours in between each coat and hit it lightly with some 320 grit sandpaper between each coat to, and you'll be left with a great smooth overall finish. So after a couple of coats of spar urethane and we sand it in between each one, we are left with this wonderful finished product. We can't wait to use it after our showers. There's nothing we really would have done differently for this project. The only thing that you could really change is to just buy these as one by twos and save you the step of cutting them down. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to keep seeing content like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel and ring the bell if you want to be notified the next time our video posts. And until next video, I'm Kyle, helping you create your own adventure at home.